Welcome to the Nonprofit Solution Spotlight series, a video series where we're talking with nonprofit leaders about how technology is impacting their mission. We're here with Patrick Bain of C4ADS. Thank you for being here, Patrick. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit more about C4ADS and your role in the work that you guys do. Sure. Uh, so C4ADS stands for the Center for Advanced Defense Studies. Uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit based in Washington, D.C. Uh, and basically what we do is we have data-driven analysis and evidence-backed reporting for issues of global conflict and security. Um, and so we, what we do is we leverage non-traditional investigative techniques uh, and emerging tech platforms uh, to um, map, track, and disrupt transnational illicit networks. Uh, we do this by uh, conducting open source investigations powered by public accessible information. And then uh, we take this information, structure it using a network analysis software tool uh, so that we can understand the convergence of illicit actors in the illicit space. My role in the organization, so I represent the data cell, uh, which is responsible for all data science and data engineering needs uh, in support of the analytical cells in our company. Wow, so it sounds like based on what you guys do, the technology probably plays a pretty key role in that. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so technology kind of fits in everything that we do as an organization. Technology really empowers our analysts to have sort of a global impact with their research. Uh, so we use technology uh, with twofold. Uh, one, we seek out tech partnerships that will enable uh, and speed up the pace of our research and analysis. Uh, one major tech partnership, obviously, is uh, AWS, which we use to house all of our data, uh, to run all of our applications and code, and uh, to supplement our compute power in order to process the massive amounts of data that we deal with as an organization. Uh, we also work with a network analysis software called Palantir, uh, and we use Palantir to structure our investigations, ingest the data, and visualize the complex um, illicit networks that we're investigating and find convergence across entities, networks, and issue areas that we didn't know existed otherwise. Uh, we also work with a maritime domain awareness company called Windward, uh, which uses AIS data to essentially track the real-time and historical movement of ships uh, all around the world uh, and gives us visibility into an otherwise extremely opaque sector. Uh, we also, my team also develops tech platforms uh, in response to the need of, needs of the analytical cells uh, and the analysts guided kind of by the investigations that they're doing in our organization. Uh, so we've developed uh, several platforms. One uh, we call Seamless Horizons, which is our data lake solution uh, built completely on AWS tools. So Seamless Horizons is meant to serve as our central repository for all of our company data. Uh, it uh, allows C4 analysts and other partner organizations that we bring onto the platform uh, to import large unruly data sets um, and process this data and search through it uh, within seconds. Uh, and so you're able to take essentially millions of PDF documents, uh, process them using our built-in optical character recognition engine, uh, and then index them into an elastic search engine in the application so that you can search through all of these different registries around the world. Uh, currently, we have about 400 million uh, entries, 400 million documents uh, across 96 jurisdictions around the world that we're able to search through uh, in seconds. Um, wow. We're also developing a, a flight tracking application yeah. uh, that we're calling Icarus. Uh, so we, this is also built on AWS tools, and essentially we partner with an organization called ADSB Exchange, uh, which is a network of hobbyists that track the movement of airplanes around the world. Uh, and basically we are working with them to deploy ADSB receivers around the world to track the movement of planes. We're doing this in response to the fact that most public uh, flight tracking software companies um, censor data at the request of the owner of the aircraft. And typically, these are the aircraft that we like to see in our investigations. Uh, you can learn a lot about kleptocrats and corrupt individuals um, by their movement. Um, and so these are the planes that we want to see. Uh, and so we're developing this application using the ADSB data that we're collecting uh, to essentially visualize uh, the real-time and historical movement of aircraft all around the world. That's amazing. And 
Can you tell us a little bit more about the connection between the use of cloud technology and the ultimate goal of disrupting these networks and bad actors? Yeah, so cloud technology essentially enables us to do this a lot faster and to kind of take some of the busy work out of the hands of the analysts and allow them to confront the big questions, the big issues that they they need to confront. We use uh, cloud technology, cloud applications to automate a lot of our processes and to pull these out of the hands of the analysts that are doing this work. Uh, things like automated scraping and structuring of different registries and websites around the world means that analysts don't have to manually go and input this data and, and search for convergence across these data sets uh, and search for entities as well. So it really speeds up the process of analysis and allows us to sort of react to these illicit networks in real time. As a company, we, you know, illicit networks uh, tend to evolve over time. Uh, and we need to evolve the way that we approach these investigations uh, to confront these networks. So you guys sound like you're really forward leaning in the use of technology, cloud services, but certainly beyond that as well. What advice do you have in the journey to harnessing the, this technology for other organizations that may be looking to do the same, but don't necessarily know where to start, or if they do know where to start, where to apply it first? The new sort of speed of velocity of new data coming in can be intimidating sometimes. Uh, and it's important for organizations to build the capability to process this data and to find meaning from the data. And the way that we've developed our tech platforms and we've seeked out tech partnerships uh, enable us to essentially have a larger impact than we otherwise would have and allows us to process the data. So I think my advice to other nonprofits would be that um, they need to build the capability. They don't need to reinvent the wheel every time that they have a, an issue with processing data, uh, but you know, find existing tech platforms that allow them to make sense out of the data and confront this issue. Uh, nonprofits with just a little bit of know-how for how to find meaning uh, from the data, as well as being powered by tools such as AWS, uh, which you know make make this a lot easier and a lot cheaper for us as an organization. Uh, any organization with a little bit of know-how can create kind of a global impact and outreach for their, their nonprofit, no matter how big they are. Well, thank you so much for being here, for sharing more about your organization, and certainly with that advice for all the nonprofits watching. Well, thank you for having me. And now we're gonna throw it over to an AWS solution architect who's gonna talk a little bit more about their technical solution. Thank you, Lauren. My name's Dominic. I'm a solutions architect for a worldwide public sector. And today we're gonna to dive a little bit deeper into C4 ADS's infrastructure. Now what we have on the board is just a subset of what they do, but we're gonna talk about generally how they use services to accelerate their mission. C4 ADS is a relatively small organization, but they're able to do a lot because they leverage AWS high-level services. So for example, for their document processing engine, what they have is a Lambda function that registers documents that need to be analyzed. They put this document into an SQSQ, or a reference to the document into an SQSQ, and use an Elastic Container Service cluster to read messages off of that queue. They perform a optical character recognition analysis of the document to extract text and phrases from the document, and they store that metadata into an Elasticsearch cluster. Of course, they store the document itself in the Amazon Simple Store Service, or S3, um, to reference the document again. Their end users interact with the system through a serverless front end. The serverless front end is host static content on an S3 bucket and leverages Cognito for user authentication. But a lot of their business applications are abstracted through API Gateway. API Gateway is, serves requests through a combination of AWS Lambda and another Elastic Container Service fleet. These fleets can proxy requests to their Elasticsearch cluster uh, to search for information across the large corpus of documents that they use to analyze trends and behaviors uh, for their domain. One of the things that allows C4 ADS to move so quickly is how they leverage 
AWS services. Speaking with the customer, they described how if they had to build a service like SQS themselves, it would have taken them a very long time and they would at minimum need to run four different virtual machines in order to support the queuing functionalities that they required. Using a service like the Elastic Container Service, they're able to deploy large fleets of containers to do that document processing without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure. By leveraging these services, C4ADS is able to move very quickly and ingest large volumes of data in a way that if they had to build these services themselves, it would take them significantly more time and effort.